evaluation manual of the Toastmasters International stated that the speaker had the final decision as to whether they needed, they would be speak, the speech or not. Well, that motion would be seated, 14 against 6-4, I think it was, with no discussion. But I asked my executive to write Toastmasters International to find out what the policy on speech evaluation really was. Because in Toastmasters Constitution, which every club is a signatory to, and which club officers are pledged to uphold, requires that Toastmasters policies be followed. Well, the executive did write Toastmasters in the National, Toastmasters in the National reply, and the executive invited me to bring a motion to allow members the final decision in whether they would repeat their speech or not. Well, that motion passed 24 for, four against, with a lot of discussion. But afterwards, the executive met, and they ruled that the motion could not be apply retroactively. <laughs> Which means I still have to repeat my number eight manual speech. But I appeal or attempted to appeal that motion. In several subs, uh, successive uh, business sessions. But the club president deemed this out of order. And in the final, that is the third session, the end of it, a motion was passed to rescind the motion to give self-determination to the speakers. Well, I turned to Toastmasters International for help. And the manager, education and club administration, and yeah, that's it, replied to me. And in part, that letter said, when someone gives a speech that does not meet project objectives, the evaluator may gently and tactfully point out this fact privately and suggest that the speaker consider repeating the project explaining the benefits of doing so. However, this can only be a suggestion. The decision to repeat the project is made by the speaker alone. The Toastmaster International also said that hey, the executive director is going to write your president to deal with this matter. And he did, or she did, actually, she did. The final paragraph of that letter Reads as follows. I realize that the club has the best of intentions, but for all the reasons just discussed, I must ask your club to immediately stop requiring members to repeat manual projects. All members must be permitted to proceed in the program. Well, I suspected that that letter would never see the light of day in my club. So I sent my copy to all those members who had email addresses that I <laughs> Who tell me do that? The president took this as the final straw and prompted his demand for my resignation. Now, the other straws was that I was disrupting uh, club meetings and that uh, I was responsible for low attendance and, <laughs> and the enthusiasm of you know the members were falling. Why am I telling you all of this? Well, it's not just to vent my feelings. <laughs> Actually, you know, this is an activity which is you know, very therapeutic <laughs> for victims of abuse like myself. <laughs> and it's not, just, it's not just to speak out so that the underlying habits and, and, and the systems and values which perpetuate such abuse to change, <laughs> but it's also to bring good news to you Toastmasters who are disheartened and dispirited in your clubs. So they understand that there are some clubs in the Caribbean that still practice this, this, this illegal task. <laughs> <laughs> Where speakers are still required, are still forced to repeat their speeches at the whim of their evaluators. The central aim of Toastmaster is to build confidence and skills. When you give evaluators the power to fail their fellow Toastmasters, you are interfering with that aim for several Toastmasters. Because it intensifies the atmosphere of fear 
which stops people speaking. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Martin, you're going to lose members. The good news my disheartened Toastmasters <laughs> is that there are clubs in the Caribbean who adhere to the intent of our founder, Dr. Lau Smeki, and where members are guaranteed their constitutional right <laughs> to progress in the Toastmasters program. I came across such a club just a few months ago, and I'm proud to be a member of the five-year-old Westside Toastmasters Club. The really good news, the really good news, Toastmasters, is that I know that you will be welcome in any of these genuine Toastmasters clubs. Madam Minister, thank you. Our first contestant will be Audrey Reed. Second, Truman Trotman. Third, Georgia Donaldson. Fourth, Jacinta Thomas Elliott. Five, Felicia Ford. Six, Maelia Petrus. Seven, Bridget Pinto, and eight, Valandi Kimberly Dorsius. Dorsius. We will invite our contestants to leave the room. Their sign is waiting for you. And they have five minutes to put their notes together after which we have. She has shown you this is slavery to slaves. Thank you. 